Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 38 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to work on making glass so we can produce some solar panels. Because we removed that capacity when we added in the silicon ingots for iron. Luckily now, it's not buried too far behind the tech tree since uh, we researched some of this stuff here. Uh, looks like all we need is the powder machines and the sintering oven. Basically for, as it says, handling powder doors and whatnot, so we need that. And then we need to do our glass melting. Which uh, one silicon goes in, turns into a glass mixture, and then 12 to 12, and uh, 4 to 3. So it looks like that's 75% efficient per silicon. Uh, it looks to be about the same efficiency as making it uh, inside a furnace. Just noticed I could improve efficiency a little bit by replacing this with a uh, red belt. Okay, now that we have the research for glass, let's just go ahead and do the solar panel research since that's what we're really doing all this for. So there's the standard uh, medium panel here, just a normal 3x3 three three panel, produces electricity and I believe AI Industries adds glass to that mix, so now it requires glass as it would make sense. Uh, and then there's these small and large ones, which are added by Bob's, but for some reason AI Industries, at least with the current version I'm using, didn't add glass to these recipes, so it was weird how these recipes didn't require glass, but this one did. So I uh, modified uh, the mod a little bit to add glass. So since this one had a little bit more glass than steel, see how it's um, five glass and four steel? So I added that to be the same here, where it's 10 glass and eight steel, and uh, three glass and two steel. So your install may or may not require glass for these small and large ones, but the small ones are two by twos and the large ones are four by fours. So it's nice having a larger combination of panels so you can make whatever pattern you want and make it work. So that's just kind of a neat thing to have. They're balanced as far as the solar output. It's basically more or less perfect. So there's really no advantage or disadvantage to using any particular panel type other than whatever works best for your pattern that you're using. So we want the medium panels and we want the big ones too. And we'll just let that research. So we need to do some hell mod. This is getting uh, increasingly outdated, but I'm going to leave it for now. I mean, I'm not really referencing it anymore, so I'm just going to create a new line. Because I'm just looking for a ratio here. So you want to do glass for molten glass. And then the ingredient. Here is the glass mixture. Let's set that to one. Okay, that's the three to one ratio. And then glass mixture it comes from silicon. Requires who boy 18 powder mixtures and then just an input of 4.5 silicon ore that's probably more than we produce yeah we're only technically producing two um, just as a side note one reason why this is becoming outdated is because as your angel bob's factory gets bigger it becomes less about perfect ratios between different resources because you have multiple processes to create the same resource so you have no idea which one which line might run at any given time so hellbot is good if you have a very set specific amount of inputs and outputs but that's kind of not how uh, angels at least turns out in the later game so that's kind of why i'm shifting away from looking to see what this tells me because now that we're getting more technologies it's less relevant and i'll look at it at a material standpoint, like how much saffroid do we have, how much steratite, and get those synchronized together, and less about, well, we started with this resource, and then 17 steps down the line, we have this resource. So that's kind of why I just went straight into glass here, because it's not, we're not creating it in real time anymore. We have a silo, and it pumps it out, so I'm just looking for a nice clean ratio for these buildings now. And actually, one thing one question worthy of asking is how much glass are we actually going to need? 
Let's create another one here and do solar. And let's just do the medium ones. And one machine. How much is it going to need? Okay, so it actually doesn't require that much glass. So that's good to know. So this amount of glass should be quite sufficient, and it's a nice clean ratio. As far as where to put it, it's starting to get a little cramped in here. We still have some room to put this stuff, but it's quickly becoming spaghetti, so we're only going to be able to add a couple more processes to this whole area before we're going to need to rebuild it somewhere else using a different system, and that's kind of okay. I'm planning on that, so this doesn't come as too much of a surprise, because just this method of handling everything is going to be a little outdated soon. But so since we need some room to design this thing, let's just walk up here. Still some rocks and whatnot left over. Okay, we need 18 powder mixers. Luckily, they're uh, two by twos as opposed to three by three, so they're smaller buildings. Okay, something like this. Then the input can go in there. The output down here. But we need room for power poles in here. All right, set these to glass. Okay. And then from there, we just need the standard uh, one induction furnace to three casting machines. So that should be ready. I tried to make it a nice little square so we can more cleanly fit it into the existing factory. I kind of want to put it out of the way because I'm worried that the space in here is going to be necessary for iron and copper and all of that for better processing. So if we put this off to the side, we have less of that problem. Even though it's kind of random in its location. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go grab something we can copy. Yeah, something quite simple. Let's put it on the end here. Something like that. set this for glass and for glass okay what kind of input I'll just put a stack one stack inserter right there and connect everything and we can send it in through here okay we need to change this logic a little bit Basically, instead of blocking the whole flow off, we want to block the flow off to making silicon ingots. Something like that. Copy that setting over. Remove the cable. Seems good. Oh, I want that belt to be straight so bad. Field of the rescue. Okay, let's hook it up. Let's see if these work properly. Seems like it. So now there's our glass mixture, which we can now smelt. Awesome. Okay, we just need to move this belt and hook it up. There we go. Delivering glass, and it looks like that ratio is working out properly. Everything is green. And it's slowly chewing through the silicon. Not sure in the long run if we're actually going to be producing more silicon than we're consuming here, but 
kind of the, the point with angel bobs is you don't really know how much of any given resource you're going to use and you always need somewhere for your byproducts to go otherwise they will fill up and your system will be clogged like you might argue do we really need to be going through the effort of turning sulfur dioxide gas into these fertilizers i'm like well eh, yes and no the short answer is no we don't have to but otherwise this could potentially clog up and i hate the idea of just throwing resources away um so it would just clog up so this is just a closed loop system that we can now ignore so the reason why you want to have logic like this is so in case silicon ever fills up it has a dump it has somewhere to go to turn into something else we don't want to necessarily get rid of all the silicon that we have we just don't want it to clog up the system that's kind of how we're looking at it just like we don't want nickel to clog up the system either and actually for nickel i added a logic as well for 10,000, so it's actually going to uh, collect nickel now because nickel does have some uses. So since we have a circuit network now, there's no reason to get rid of all of it. Just get rid of it when we start getting to whatever obligatory number we have decided is too much. Okay, let's make some solar panels. Eventually, I'm just going to clean up that list. I'm just using them as little work pads, notepads to work on here. So you want to make small ones, mediums, and larges. Now, depending on exactly what kind of pattern we create, we might not really need smalls, mediums, and larges. But since we don't know, let's build one machine of each, because why not? Let's see, it's probably going to use the entire factory's worth of electronic boards, it looks like. Assuming all three are running at the same time. If only one machine runs, then... Uh, less so. And if we need to scale this up, you know, then we'll make more machines. But they all require exactly the same resources, so it's not too big a deal. And I think these are fairly slow machines, so... Yeah, you don't really need very high-speed inserters either, so this should be pretty simple. I guess we'll start building up here since there's some empty space. See, there's an iron line. Do we need iron? Of course not. <laughs> it's never that easy. So we have small, medium, large. And then an input on each side. It doesn't really matter as far as the speeds of these, which one is which. So just a, a belt with two. And a belt with two. Three chests, and then this is where we're going to use our circuit network to set some logic here. So we say we want a small less than 50, it will keep running. And that way we don't have to have any kind of limiter on these chests at all. And this can help when you're building a very large setup. So let's say we're building a setup and we know we need 576 small panels. How many squares is that? Well, who knows? But you can just type in 576 and bam, and then go about your day and it will eventually stop. Now, I don't think they'll fit on a chest that small, but actually, now that I think about it, since we have chests with limiters on them, it's okay to use the steel ones to have more flexibility. So we say that's 50. I'll copy it over and just change this to medium and large. Okay, that space is too much. Doesn't work. That looks pretty good. Okay, and then we have kind of the difficulty of getting all these resources in here. So it doesn't matter which, whatever one is most convenient. Okay, everything's delivered. Let's see how it works. Seems pretty good. These are just slow machines, so... You know, they, they have a long crafting time here. 18 seconds, so it takes a long time to fill them up, but they eventually do, and that's why the yellow inserters work just fine. 
Okay. Well, it's gonna take quite some time for all these chests to fill up so we can actually try to make a solar panel pattern. So in the meantime, what else can we do? Well, since we're working on electricity, why not do other methods of making electricity more efficiently? But that's the end of this episode, so that's gonna have to wait till the next one. I'll see you later.